The highly anticipated American Horror Stories is the spin-off that American Horror Story fans, like myself, have long been waiting for. And with that anticipation comes a lot of pressure for the show to be everything that everyone wants it to be. The first episode dropped in its two parts this week, and let me say, it is not what I was expecting, nor what I want as an American Horror Story fan, or even a horror fan. But before we get into it, if you want videos on the latest movies and TV shows delivered straight to your subscription feed, be sure to spank that subscribe button and ring that bell to not miss a single thing. I'm Matt Rogers and join me today as we take a look at The Rubber Woman and how bad it really is. Now a big spoiler disclaimer for this as I'm going to be talking about the first two episodes in detail, but if you're watching this you have likely seen the two part premiere or don't care enough to, but you have been warned. For those of you who aren't familiar, American Horror Stories is the first spin-off series based on the anthology TV series American Horror Story. Stories consist of individual stories in each episode. The original American Horror Story is of course known for individual seasons concentrating on their own themes. So in theory, Stories is a great opportunity for the producers to explore horror themes that they didn't wish to dedicate a whole season on. But let's get into the first episode. And where else to start but at the beginning? The episode opens with a very familiar scene, a young family driving towards their new home, of course a callback to the very first season of American Horror Story, this being the first of a few callbacks which we'll get into later. But already at this early stage of the episode I had concerns that they were going to rely on their tried and trusted formula that they know worked previously instead of taking a risk. Something I will give them props for is keeping the opening theme song. That song is so iconic and never gets old. I didn't really like that they started to remix it in the later seasons of American Horror Story, but it's back and nostalgia temporarily clouded my judgement. But then the characters started conversing, so Ryan Murphy obviously loves a good amount of campiness in his shows, Glee of course being one of his breakout shows and the campiest of them all. He then surprised us all and got everyone's attention when he created the polar opposite of Glee, American Horror Story. But he obviously missed the light-hearted content and met us halfway with Scream Queens, the perfect combination of horror and comedy. The first season of that show was so good and the campy dialogue felt right at home. But I digress, my point is that the lines in this show from the very start feel so campy and that's not what this show is, or what the majority of fans want either. Just listen to this conversation. What do you think baby? Oh, I haven't seen any ghosts yet. And you won't because ghosts don't exist. Uh uh, hey, don't ever say that again. Let's talk about the characters. Now Matt Bomer I can handle, he is a talented man. The daughter Scarlett, she's alright, probably doing the best she can with the script she's being given, but god, the other dad is the worst, and I do not say this lightly. So one of the scenes Scarlett puts on the rubber suit and scares her dads after they're already concerned about her dark characteristics, but then she accidentally cuts the annoying dad with a knife and this is how he reacts. I think there's an urgent care nearby. Let me come with you. No, just go to your room. You can come out to throw away that awful costume, but that is it. And please be aware, young lady, I will not be talking to you for weeks. What? What kind of a line is that? I guess in defence of the actor Gavin Creel, that was again just the script he was given, but get this, creators Ryan Murphy and Brad Falchuk wrote this damned episode, and they created the whole damn franchise, so they should know by now what they're doing. At first I found the daughter interesting, as she had some violent sexual tendencies, so there was some depth there that wasn't obvious at first. I also appreciated the character's confidence, telling Paris Jackson's character about her kinks and dark secrets. Speaking of Jackson, she's not a bad little actress. The daughter of Michael Jackson is more known for her modelling career, but I see some great potential there, and this could prove to be a launching pad for her. So Jackson's character Maya turns out to betray Scarlett by live streaming her spilling her dark secrets. Reminded me a little bit of Carrie actually, which isn't a bad thing, but after this scene the episode kind of shifts, and Scarlett's darkness goes from mysterious and complicated to a more shallow teenage angst and she gets suicidal and kills everyone. Or did the rubber man do it? Either way, it doesn't seem to matter nor do I care because it doesn't contribute to the overarching story. Speaking of which, what was the point of the therapist being killed earlier in the episode? As it sure didn't add anything to the plot except maybe to squeeze a kill scene into the start of the episode in an effort to hold your interest? Sloppy writing. 
On the topic of kills, is that supposed to be the horror here? The only arguably scary scene was the girl group being murdered, but was it really that scary? Would you call it a horror story? Hardly. But I'm not done with the criticisms yet, oh far from it. As then the second episode starts, and we are blessed with this interaction. Before I show it, just take note of the acting, the dialogue, and even the editing. You're not gonna do shit. I know her. She's a ghost here. She's... she's mean. So what? So are we. Not like me. We should go. And that was supposed to be a tense moment? Scarlet this time around has lost all mystery and intrigue, basically becoming a caricature of herself from the first episode, with some really on-the-nose lines. You don't feel all the pain that's been inflicted here? Of course I do. That's what I like about it. The annoying dad did the same. He became a sociopathic manipulator, which he showed no signs of in the first episode. It's like Brad Falchuk, who wrote the episode, decided to change his mind in part two. This episode notably didn't have Ryan Murphy on the writer's table. I will give it a rest for a moment though. They didn't rely on callbacks as much as I first thought they would and neither on fan service, with probably just the right amount of minor references to the first season, like the twins in the basement or Dylan McDermott being referred to as the other dead therapist stuck in the house. But let's fast forward the easily forgettable storyline of this episode, which focuses on the naivete of Scarlett and her newfound girlfriend, who wants her to kill herself so they can live together forever. But speaking of naivety, after all the attempts to kill Scarlet and the girl groups exacting their revenge for what happened to them in the first episode, everyone just forgives Scarlet at the end. Oh well, I guess we were pretty mean and deserve eternity in this house as long as you don't die here and stay with us. And apparently the dads dying solved all their issues and they live happily ever after. I get that the story only being two episodes long, they don't have an entire season to flesh this thing out. But at least write a story that can be wrapped up quickly and doesn't wrap everything up in the last five minutes. On a small yet notable positive point, the music and sound design was great from start to finish for both of these episodes. The contrasting happy music used throughout the violent killing of these characters and even down to the subtle squeaking of the rubber suit. Very well done. Now I know I've gone super hard on this, but I'm just so disappointed. A self-contained episode focusing on one aspect of horror had infinite possibilities, but they did nothing to surprise or even scare the audience. Mind you, there is still a whole season to follow, but the wind has officially been taken out of my sails. Which has me thinking, maybe I'm just not the target audience anymore. Is this series instead being aimed at a younger teen audience and hence the more simple writing and less scares? I feel like even if that's the case, you can't use that as an excuse for poor writing. Please, I'd love to know if you genuinely enjoyed these episodes, as I would like to hear what you liked about them. Because for me, it has to be more than just showing me the house and suit from a season of a TV show I liked. So let me know, I'll be down there in the comments. But be sure to subscribe for weekly videos covering your favourite movies and TV shows. If you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard, and if you had a good time hanging out, then Bank that like button. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all.